and welcome to my channel. Well, I thought I'd show you 10, I like to call them medium sized fixed blades that I like to carry. And uh, I've got them in a box down here, so I'm just going to do like three at a time, then throw the last one in. So, let's start off with this guy. Now, I have a brand new one of these, but I like carrying this one more because it has, it's got that worn-in feel, it has character, and it has that sharpened top swedge. I found that like five-inch size nice, five, four, up to six-inch blade is about optimum. Uh, for me, I like bigger blades, you know, like if I'm going to go up with any bigger blade like that, it's going to be a Bowie knife. It's going to have like a nine or something inch in blade, but that's why I like carrying this one. It's made in USA, just like the other one is, but it has a little bit more character. So that, that's one. Let's set these somewhere where I don't lose them. I have a tendency to drop knives in here and not find them until a lot later. Oh, before we get into that little safety update, I was um, sharpening this case knife, right? And I had the worn clip blade out. And this is the removable clamp. It's removable, but I had it in the in the tool. And with this, you've got to watch, with, with pocket knives, you've got to watch on these uh, clamp type systems. Especially if you're doing like 20 degrees or something like that. You're... Uh, your blade, if you if you put this in there that deep, all you're gonna do is shave the top of this. So I I I I've been adjusting it out, you know, and tightening the crap out of it, because I didn't want it to move. You know, I try to get it parallel, and instead of doing it right here like I should have done, I was doing it in the tool. So I had this thing clamped in the tool, and I was trying to tighten this. Yeah, I was going this way. Or was I? You're breaking it. There we go. I had it jump over the track. Anyway, I had it in the tool, and I had it. I think I had it facing this way, and I was tightening the crap out of out of this thing, and my hand slipped, and it hit me right there. And that doesn't look like much, but boy, that sucker went deep. That sucker went deep. It's always one of Usually when I'm sharpening my knives, I wind up cutting myself, but I was setting, you know, the edge on this, and just because I was carrying it. So, if I'd, if I'd have been doing it like this, and tightening it, I'm going to have to my little tightening foil. Does it fall off? Oh, am I going insane? It's a little tiny way around over here, isn't it? Yeah, I am tightening the crap out of it. I'll have to find that now. There it is. It's sitting right there. Idiot! Oh, idiot! All right, I'll call my names. Anywho. Yeah, I found with this, the Precision Adjust tool is a, is a good tool. I really like it. But... If you do things like I just did, you can get into a situation where you got to refix it. It's the same thing with uh, re rotating this thing. Let me get this guy in alignment. He's, He's got to be in a certain way. Pull this up. Okay. Ow! 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 You get this thing on top of that. And then you put it in there. And there's a little washer you might want to make sure you don't lose. And then that's how you refix it. But you can see some in some cases I came close to scraping it or did scrape it. So you want to make sure that blade's sticking beyond there. But anyway, getting past all that nonsense. All right, number two, the case. I love this thing, man. It's It reminds me of the K-Bar, but it's a little bit more uh, sturdy than the little K-Bar that I had. It has a little bit more length. I love the leather stacked handles and everything. And let's see what its number is. 368, 365-5, stainless steel. Pretty decent uh, sheath with it. It's kind of an odd 
closing system, but it works. You know, instead of just having a little flap over here, it covers the whole handle a little bit more. But that's another cool one that I rotate out. All right, let's where are we going to set you? All right, this guy is, is approaching like the large size, but it's a very good... It's a Joker, the Zorro. The handle is a little bit thick for, you know, like day-to-day -day carry if, if you're trying to put it underneath the shirt because a lot of times I don't have it. I You can conceal a, a knife here. Or you can go concealed or unconcealed here in Texas. It's perfectly legal knife or gun. So a lot of times it's to not frighten people a lot. I just drape my t-shirt or whatever or my shirt or coat or whatever if it's cold enough over it. But I like carrying that one. That's another one. Now, usually this one carries a little bit better. It's a little bit smaller. It's another Joker. It's the Joker Gorzo, I think. Yeah, this one is a very good size. It's got that nice drop point, almost spear point to it. And you can choke up here. Everything about it is just very nice. Lanyard loop, if you wanted to put a lanyard in there. Again, it has that... It has a different way. See, the, the way the case did it, they use a lot more leather going over there. This way, it still works, but of course it had more of a heel to grab onto. But yeah, I like that one. That's another common carry. Common one that I carry. All right, I'm going to set you back over here. All right, we've got to pull out three more. So we'll pull out this one. We'll pull out this one. You've seen this one recently. And we'll pull out this one. Now I've got a lot of BPS knives that I like to carry, but this is one of the ones that fits that category. This is the Adventurer, I think. Carbon. Carbon steel. Just feels really good in the hand. I think they're still available on Amazon. There for a while, they had to shut down because their factory was being bombed and stuff, but I think they started up and they were supplying knives to the Ukraine military. So they're still in business, which is a good thing. But that's a good knife. Of course, this marbles is a really cheap one, but man, you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of blade. You can do this choke up like this if you want, but you get a lot of knife for. Uh, for your money, you know, like a craton kind of rubberized handle here. And I put a convex edge on this one. This is the one where the tip bent a little bit for me throwing it in the ground. I must have hit a rock or something like that. But it's still a good knife to carry, you know. That's a good one. Plop. All right, the next one. Solingen German Blade. Of course, we've got the Puma, Bowie. I like this one. It's like, this handle might be too thin for some people, but it really fits well the way they have this single brass guard on there. And I guess that's the number, if you want to know what it is. I don't know what this... They might be using a different Rockwell scale on that German steel. It's German. But yeah, this is a cool one. And I put this little elastic cord on here just to help hold it rather than tie it down and all that stuff. So I can go in here and that'll keep it holding to the handle. I'm not sure this is uh, this is leather. This might be that compressed sawdust type of stuff, but it, it might be leather. It just don't. It just feels kind of odd. But it's a nice sheath. I'm not so super worried about it. All right, we're going we're going at a pretty good speed here. Two. What the, I must counted wrong because there it should it should equal out to ten. I don't know what I did. I'll have to go look at this. <clears throat> Here's another Joker, the Rui Twelve. It's a pretty good size. Got some jimping up here. Nice uh, olive wood or olive wood or zebra wood. I think this is olive wood handle 
on here. Stainless steel. Espanol. Yep. Great joker knife. Open top sheath. Easy to get to in and out. You don't have to worry about any flaps or anything. Of course, Saviti Elementum fixed blade. This is the kind of cool one to carry around. It's not too... Not too big, not too small, just about right. Pretty smooth handles here. These would probably be pretty slick if you got like blood and guts and stuff on them, but other other than that, they feel all right. All right, I guess I can start sticking you back in here. I have to go through and see. I thought I had ten of them. Maybe I'm done. That. All right, BPS Savage. Now you know I can interchange the sheaths with these. I could drop it in another one that has a ferrule rod on it if I want. But nice leather. Ah, genuine leather dangler sheath. Dangler. Dangler. Alright. Well, if that ain't ten, then this one will count as a medium size uh, knife. Of course, we got the uh, A.G. Russell Sting. Now, I've been looking the uh, CRKT has the Sting 3. It has that thumb groove right in here. I had an, a one that I think it was made by A.G. Russell. But it was all it was all uh, it was the same size as the Sting but it was all plastic or fiberglass reinforced. I had it for the longest time. I remember they advertised it as driving it through some plywood or a two before or something without breaking it. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. Let me get one of those. And it turns out, yeah, you sharpen the edge with a nail file and everything, but it, it would lacerate. It wouldn't really cut. You know, if you went like that, it would cut you. Uh, but it wouldn't be a sharp cut, it'd be a jagged cut. It's plastic, you know how I'm trying to get plastic to cut. And it had kind of a thick, obtuse, you know, angle on it and, and ridges along the side to reinforce it. So if I didn't do 10, this will count as 10. Because I count it, I don't know, I count wrong. So yeah, um, drop this in a cowboy boot. And this is a pretty good backup. Just in case. You're, on, you're down on the ground, and you're laying there. You just bring your knee up to you, and there's your boot. Grab that knife and start cutting ankles. <laughs> Somebody's going to lose an ankle. All right, so there you go. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.